variation is inherent to any process. Sometimes this variation in the process is so high that it creates problems for the customers and the business. Control charts can help you to distill random variation in a process from those that occur due to a specific reason. Variations which are natural to a process and those which are random are called as common cause variation. On the other hand, variations which occur due to a specific reason is called as special cause variation. All processes which are in control will have common cause variation that is natural to it. But processes which are going out of control will not only have common cause variation but they will also have special cause variation. Let me take an example. Let's assume that the boy who drops newspaper in your house drops the newspaper by 7 am every day. By which we mean that he drops the newspaper around 7 am every day. There might be few days when he drops it at 6.30, few days he is dropping it at 7.30 and the remaining days in between. And that's perfectly normal for you. However, on one particular day, he dropped the newspaper at 12 noon. On that particular day, I am sure you are going to call and ask him why have you been late. And he might have an assignable reason as to why he is late. Probably the delivery of newspaper that he received was late. So, a variation in any process is natural and that is called as common cause variation. It occurs in every process. But if that variation goes beyond a particular threshold, then there is an assignable reason to it and it's called as special cause variation. The purpose of control chart is to find out whether there is any special cause variation in a process or not. The purpose of control chart is not to minimize the common cause variation. Common cause variation is natural to any process. If you want to reduce the common cause variation in any process, then we have to find out ways of increasing the capability of the process by doing improvements to the process by new technology, etc. But if your process has special cause variations, then it means that these variations are not natural to the process. As a result, you can easily identify an assignable reason and eliminate that particular cause. Special cause variation makes your process unstable and non-predictable over a period of time. Control limits that you have learned about earlier in the control charts are the threshold limits which are used to differentiate between common cause variation and special cause variation. Any data point which falls within the control limit is said to be falling there because of common cause variation. But if that data point goes outside the control limits, then that is because of special cause variation. These control limits are derived from the normal distribution theory. Control charts make three important assumptions. The first assumption is that 99.73% of the data lie between plus or minus three standard deviation limits from the mean. In other words, plus or minus three sigma limits from the mean. The second is that the data is randomly distributed. There are no patterns in the data. And the third, that the distribution is symmetric. If you are able to recollect, these three principles come from the theory of normal distribution. The control limits are computed based on the three sigma limits on either side, which I spoke of just now. As you could see in this illustration, the two limits which are on either side of this normal distribution curve are the ones which are the control limits on the upper and lower side of your control chart. At this point, I want to briefly talk about the concept of specification limits and differentiate them from control limits. You have already learnt of specification limits and now in control charts, we are talking about control limits. Specification limits are set by the customers. They are assumed to be the voice of the customer and they are used to determine whether our process is capable of delivering the required output to the customers or not. Anything that goes outside the specification limit is considered as a defect that is undesirable to the customers. On the contrary, 
the control limit is computed from the performance of the process it has nothing to do with the customers so you can assume that control limits is voice of the process if the process has lesser variation then you would have tighter control limits and if the process has more variation then the control limits would be naturally broader so how can we use both control limits and specification limits to our favor let's take three different scenarios scenario 1 where the control limit is narrower and the specification limits are broader this is the most desirable scenario because if let us say a data point lies outside the control limit but within the specification limit then we have an out of control which will trigger us to immediately take necessary actions before it impacts the customer because this data point hasn't breached the customer specification limits so the control limits in this case are acting as a warning signal which is what they are meant to be this is the most desirable situation as i mentioned earlier scenario 2 is one where the control limits and specification limits are same if the specification and control limits are same then there is no warning at all the moment a data point goes outside the control limit it is also breaching the customer limits as a result the customers will get impacted as soon as the process goes out of control now as a owner of the process you will have very little leeway to find out what can be done to prevent the customers from getting impacted by the poor performance of the process so this situation is undesirable the third scenario in which the specification limits are much narrower than the control limits extremely undesirable scenario because the control limits are lenient than the specification limits the process may produce many defects which are leading to customer dissatisfaction and you as a owner of the process will not even come to know about it. so this is a scenario which is as good as not having a control limit itself there is no process control that is existent in this scenario so to sum up the best scenario will be to have a customer specification limit that is broader than the control limits but we cannot decide the customer specification limits it's decided by the customers so in our own benefit we should make sure that the variation in our process has been brought to such a level that we have some buffer between the customer specification limits and the control limits that will give us some leeway to take necessary control measures so that the process comes back to control if there is a special cause of variation